If you like to listen to podcasts like this one, go to podcastone.com right now and vote to put Podcast One founder Norm Pattis on the big stage at the South by Southwest Festival in Austin next year. You see, Norm and a panel of experts are going to discuss how podcasts are really the only place left that can still push creative boundaries and give you what you really want. Quality entertainment, when you want, where you want. So help us help you. Go to podcastone.com and click the Vote for Podcast banner. And together, we'll show the world how cool podcasts really are. Guys, do you want to give your women a hard time? Erections. Really, do you people think we're so shallow that the only way to get us to listen is using a sultry voice? Let me tell you how thinking men are dealing with their erections. Enzyte. It's true. Millions of men rely on Enzite brands knowing they'll be ready to stand and deliver a confident performance anytime, every time. That's huge. Just one capsule a day, sort of like a vitamin you take once a day, is all it takes for strong peak male enhancement. Hurry, if you call now, you can score a special Enzite trial pack for the sack and receive a 10-day sample of Ogaplex for the ultimate male experience free with your order. Call now for the most powerful erections imaginable with the Enzite trial pack for the sack. Call 1-800-993-5250 or go to SmilingBob.com. 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 These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any disease. Free trial requires via life enrollment with future auto shipments. PodcastOne.com presents the Ask Women Podcast. Uh Uh-huh. A place where two female comics and a professional wing girl get together to dissect the female mind. You don't know how I feel. And explain it to men in terms they can actually understand. Boobs. Now, here's the lovely ladies of Ask Women. Well, hello, pretty people. Welcome to the Ask Women Podcast, where you get advice straight from the source, women. I am Haley White. So great to have you here today. And I'm joined by my gorgeous co-hosts, best-selling author and relationship expert extraordinaire, Marnie Kinris, mm-hmm. and of course, comedian Kristen Carney. Let's not forget... Beast mode mode. Half low mo. Full flow. Full no. flow. Let's What's keep up? it at half flow right okay, now. I can't handle you now. at full flow. <laughs> How about I can't. Flat line mo. <laughs> no, I like half. Half flow is good. All right, it keeps it going. Is, okay. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. This is too intense. Okay. <gasps> Marnie, um, you had a story you were going to start out with. Well, the story I wanted oh, to tell, because this, it, it relates to um, the chapter in the man's playbook for today, um, but it's about, you know, persistence and going after what you want, because I was talking to uh, Kristen before about this, but um, I was having problems with my website, and I had a lot of complaints for the team over at Google, but you can't call anybody at Google. You can't even email there's no anybody. Hotline. There's no hotline for like Google. The they just say no, and then it's like, oh, okay, now I'm screwed. There's no backdoor to Google unless you're like a crazy website. So anyway, Google moved down the block for me recently, mm. and so I was like, oh, well, when they open up their doors, I'm going there, no and I'm talking way. to somebody. Yes, because I wanted my questions answered. So I, I thought, and you know what's amazing? I love the story because I've thought of that. Because I hate their new Gmail format. It doesn't work on my computer because it's a little outdated. Yeah. And I cannot, oh, I can't mm. make attachments with their new stupid format of their, so I want to just put notes under the door like every day and be like, go back to the old Gmail <laughs> or else. Uh, just uh, every Kristen day. Kristen Carney's coming after you. They're oh in God. that uh, binocular building. Yeah, yeah. Like, right yeah. there off on Main Rose. Street. Exactly. So, so what happened? It. Well, so I went over there with my laptop. Dun, 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 I was dun, ready. Dun, dun. And I <laughs> rang the doorbell at the front. And I was like, can I talk to someone? <laughs> hey Google, I got a problem. What do you I got a problem. Hey Mr. Oz, she I need to so talk nice to you. She was so nice to me. She's like, oh, we can't let you in the building. And other people were walking in. I'm <laughs> thinking I should just run. It. Right. So horrible. But so she. But I was like, Wait, how am I supposed to figure out how to? She's do like, just Google it. it. You're like, I am googling it right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so I was like, well, how do you do this? And so I had like my whole list of things. Wait, was this going on between you and a speaker comp? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. I could see her though. I was like, I don't know how to do these things. I'm not a programmer. Can you help me? And so she was telling me like where to go on the website to figure out. I'm like, I don't understand what it's saying. I've been there before. And she was giving me step by step instructions. <laughs> How to do it? Oh my god! And I was—I left still very angry at Google, but I felt a little bit better because she was really super sweet. They probably get that more than you would think. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. for sure. Yeah. I would think they would get it all the time because yeah. they should have a contact phone number like most huge companies. Right. You really know annoying. What? You know what? Fuck Google. Okay, <laughs> they came to Venice, and now you can't even eat in Venice for under a hundred bucks I because know. it is so expensive now. 
They're taking they're, over my old they're gym, too. They're taking over Gold's gym very soon. We would take over they're everybody. They will. will. do it all. Sorry, guys. We're kind of loopy today. Aren't I know. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Woo! Anyway. Google. <laughs> anyway, the whole point of this was about persistence. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> and like you got to go for what you want. I wow, think that that... Marty, I, I like it. I like the connection, though. the tie-in. <gasps> I'm not saying, like, stalk a woman, go to her door, but I'm saying, Let like... Let me in! And like, tell like, her what you want over her speakerphone. No, seriously. I have a problem. <laughs> I can't figure this out. But I hope that, in some way, that was a motivating message to be persistent with people and to, you know, go after what you want and get your answers and don't, like, think that there's social rules in place that says you shouldn't go ring the doorbell of the Google building and oh. demand to have answers. <laughs> well, now we know. Um, well, speaking of social rules, we were talking about earlier the whole idea of being with someone and basically the idea that when you're in a monogamous relationship, you like to have the thought that maybe you could have a quote unquote hall pass. Yeah. The idea to, you know, sleep with one other person. Now, I know mm-hmm. I always have had like a celebrity thing. My mind's always been Seth MacFarlane. Actually, oh, that's a, that's a waste that's actually, of a pass. No, it's awesome. And he's amazing. He's How awesome. Dare you? Although I find his mouth weird for some reason. Not in person. It's, uh, it's his still, mouth is it's, amazing It's only used to taking dick. That's why. What? <laughs> no. You know, that's oh. a rumor. He's not gay. Anyways, but what do you guys think about that? Like, not being a celebrity, how do you feel about that? I don't know, but I think it would be a good uh, topic for today's chapter in the man's playbook. Thank you, Marnie. On this team, we fight for that itch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that itch. We claw with our fingernails for that itch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, that's going to make the fucking difference between winning and losing. We now have full flow mo (laughs) after... (laughs) <laughs> that piece right there. Yeah, I just got so pumped. I know, seriously. I have a picture of Mo, what his face looks like when he's listening to that. I'm going to put it on our Instagram, Ask One Pod. Check it out shortly. Yes, Anyways. and comment on it for sure. It's um, like after that, I just expect him to like turn to me and punch me directly in the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Wait, so, okay, so what do you guys think of hall passes? Can it, it happen? Do it if you're cool. Wait, are we talking about celebrities to, or to like, like the whole dream thing or like real life? I think it's like... I think in real life. I, I get this whole like monogamy thing, but it's like we are human beings. Thank we, you. When it comes down to it, we're animals. Like it's so gross when I'm like thinking about I have nostrils and so does my cat. I have a tongue and so does my cat. I have a tail and so does my nose. <laughs> but it's weird. Like we're so, we're just animals. And yeah. so when we put all of these restrictions on on what we are naturally prone to do, I think it's just a little unfair. And I know we are a society and we do have to live by some rules, but if that's something that you're okay with, I think if you found someone that's also okay with it, I think there's no problem. But what if you're all. okay with it and your partner isn't? What um, do you do? Then, I, then um, you know. Then you I don't, don't do you it. Know, maybe, uh, maybe. Uh, you don't. Yeah. I don't <laughs> know. No, you I don't. don't know what the answer is. I, I, look, I think this is a very slippery slope. Exactly. It, it, it takes two extremely sexually and mentally mature adults to handle an open relationship. Oh, for sure. From what I understand from open relationships is they normally don't work out. Um, Actually, they did a study on the happiest people in the world who ooh, are in relationships. You are about to be no. And the happiest people are people in open relationships. See, I oh. can't imagine that because my, my fear is like them coming home the next day and you're like, how was last night? I think, it, well, I wonder if that means swingers. I, I, see, I'm I think sure. that's different. Being together opens. and experiencing it together, I think okay. is more yeah. of an adventure than separating and going your own way. That to me would create a lot of yeah, drama. I, have, I do have to clarify. I'm so not, I'm not, a proponent of swinging. I think that's weird. I I was approached by a couple once. They were gross wearing like uh, Hawaiian shirts. I don't know. It was just like, oh, Wait, who you are were you approached people? to swing? Yes, I was. How did this approach go down? I was waiting tables. And Me too. I was, so I was approached to swing. Yeah. What? Yes. I wish I, I worked was, at a restaurant. I was their waitress. <laughs> <laughs> they loved the way I carried the meat and they just couldn't. Oh, yeah. I was approached too, Kristen, by these, this couple and they kept looking at me and then in my, in I was the so chat, uncomfortable. they wrote a thing like, do you want to come over later? Left their address and I was so confused. Like, drinks? What? I was 21. 
And then I was like, oh. Right. And then you went. <laughs> and then I went. And everything changed. <laughs> Hollywood what? swinging. Um, that's yeah. crazy. And I, I just think the swinging thing, it's this like weird culture that would be on like HBO's Real Sex. It's yeah. like just so out 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 there. I'm not free enough and like I don't like to wear, wear weird things. And You don't have to wear oh, weird things yes, to be a swinger, do. Kristen. Yes, no. 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 Go, okay, watch. on go, Like watch, bathrobes? Watch Bruno. Okay, amazing movie. Oh. I love Bruno. No. And it's, it's so funny. It's so funny, but it's also so telling socially. That's why I like the movie. Like, if you look at it for face value, it's his penis is swinging around. And Taking it's like social talking. cues from Bruno. No, it is. Uh, it There's was obviously directed, a deep story behind it. It was directed by Larry Charles, who directed basically half of the Seinfeld episodes. He's a very smart man. He's very insightful. <laughs> and they put him uh. in situ. They put Bruno in public situations to make other people uncomfortable and right. to see how they would respond. Right. And so he goes to a swinging party. And it's pretty freaking weird. I think it's like you had a messed up childhood if you're like sitting there sucking off some guy with uh, five other dudes and women sitting right there. I think there's I something, agree. There's yeah. something Hold on. screwed let's not, up let's about that. Let's not be so that. judgmental. I mean, I, no, no, I agree with you. It's sorry, weird. I, I'm sorry. I just I will be judgmental toward it because I find it completely... But- uneducated it's like we turn into animals it's one thing that we are animals we can behave like it i think at a certain level but when you do it at that level it turns creepy well of course i mean there's 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 you're making it very black and white there's different levels of all that stuff i don't think i mean obviously i I think that would be kind of weird but i think there's different levels all black and white people doing it's like that scene from fear and loathing in las vegas where they all turn into lizards into in the in the bar and they all start eating each other and having sex with each other that's basically what right but it's 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 weird that's that's creepy and I, I agree like with a that, demonic field but I don't think I don't think it necessarily has to be like that. I think that you could even be in a relationship and say fantasize with your husband or boyfriend together, not even acting on those things and just sharing in whatever that fantasy is that you guys have together, and that can be you know enough for you to like well, be able to live it out. What yeah. about okay? So let's say, do you watch Entourage or did no, you ever watch no, it? No, no, no. I did. But okay, so there's there's like television shows or movies where they show you know like a party after uh, like uh, a rock stars went out with each other, and you see all these people like naked all over the room. And there's been drugs and alcohol, and it looks like they had an amazing time. Does that creep you out? Because yeah, it, really, yeah, it's like the Jerry Seinfeld thing because I'm obsessed with that that way of life. He says, I, I can't do a threesome. Then I have to get like weirdo lighting and I have to get like a shag carpet <laughs> and I have to grow a weird mustache because that's how I picture it. And I that's completely... how you picture it, though. But that's, that's how yeah. you picture it. Yeah, but that's I mean, stereotypes exist for a reason. Yeah, yeah, there's normal people who do it. But the overall picture of it, I'm just like way too yeah. normal for the shit. I, I picture Mo, Mo I in bed with three women just getting it on and having a great time. <laughs> That's yeah, what that I mean. That's what I picture too. Yeah, that's what I picture. So it makes sense. No, but like, I, I, see, I don't think it's okay. If I want to go to that place, yes, I can see it as creepy. But then that's just me being afraid to do those things. Like, yeah, because but, but not because you're so creepy. To label it, yeah. Like, but I know I'm closed off in that sense yeah. that I wouldn't do it. That's why it's creepy for me. But like they're in my way of doing it, I think I could I would have it could be amazing. If I was open to it, I think it would be awesome. Yeah. Huh? Well, it would. Look, well, it would be fun. Going for how well, what's up? You're making weird noises into the mic. Like, oh, am I really? Yeah. Oh. Cuz he's like I was gonna talk say, and I was like, say uh, something. I gotta, uh, well, no, what going back to hall passes here. Oh yeah, I forgot and, our topic. And, and I'm a big, you know, I think guys can have a hall pass. Oh, that's and, and, and I know, I know before I, before, you know, you girls eat me alive. Here's the thing. Well, with, you wish. Dead. Here's the thing with men. When we see another hot girl, we want to have sex with them, just to have sex with them, and then want nothing to do with them, right? I could love my girl at home and love her to, and be a great man to her, but then I want to just go have sex with this other girl purely out of an extinct, uh, um, instinctual thing. What makes you think that women don't want the same thing? No, because women, and, and, and you could argue Some me women this. Do. Because Some do, but I'm going to say, I'd say 85% of women get emotionally attached to men they have sex with. Maybe initially, but I think that after we start getting older, we, we've been talking about this. I mean, there's less of that emotional and, and, connection and look, with it. Maybe when you're older, but look, at the end of the day, you, you chicks are chicks. You're going to sleep with the dude. You're opening up yourself emotionally in that moment, right, to a man. And when he kind of takes a piece of that, after doing that a couple times, you women get emotionally attached. I've never met a woman to teach me otherwise, and I'm going to stick by that. So you're saying that you can have a hall pass to sleep with whoever you want because you're not emotionally connected, but because women do get emotionally connected, we don't get the same privileges? Well, that's what I'm, well, because look, at the end of the day, I'm going to still come home to my girl, 
Whereas with women, I feel at the end of the day, but that's, that's a fear in question. But yeah. that's a fear of yours that she possibly wouldn't come home to you. It, it, but and, and if you possibly wouldn't come home to her, you have no idea. And what because will of happen. that, I'll bite the bullet as a man. I don't think it can be and on I, the street like that. And I and and for me, women, I think women are more inclined. The, the, what did, I forget was oxytocin that's released. You do yeah. have more of an attachment. No. There, there are evolutionary and biological reasons exactly. as to why, as you were saying before, women want to stick around with guys that they sleep with. Like there was this. Who was telling me about this? Peter from Ask Men was telling uh, me about this book that was called, it was a really good name, but it was like some, uh, about about women who are now like, this the sexual revolution for women that's happening yeah. right now, like things like Girls Gone Wild and women like just putting sexuality out there, like dancing on the dance floor with their butt like in the like air. Gone Wild, it can still be just being sexual without being so like in your face, but yes. Right. No, but, but and saying by in your face, you mean that like, because yeah. in, the, in women's brains, it, it doesn't work the same way as men. It, once you you do have sex and you put that sexually like that's not that it's not what we're programmed for we're not programmed to procreate and have like lots of babies with lots of different people so huh. I, I hear what most saying and i'm not a scientist so i i don't know 100 what i'm even saying but um it i don't i think that some women could handle a hall pass and some men could handle a, a hall pass i don't think that you know men should get it and women shouldn't get it because we but, could potentially become but, emotionally but connected I, you know any woman that i've met that could handle a hall pass has something going on in her her head because she a can't stay faithful to the man she's with i don't think that's true oh. I, I will tell you i was 23 when i met my husband i am missing out on a lot of sexual adventures that in my mind i would like to live out and yeah. if i were to have i don't know if i would but, even but take it think, if i got the hall do you pass. think you can have sex with a guy purely from sex and and never talk to him again yes because yeah. because most women i feel need that they need that conversation that mental stimulus to open up There's their certain, legs I'll be honest, in, the that are in my lives right now in my life right now that i could just have sex with because they disgust me on other levels <laughs> like or i don't even like, care when i was younger i used to like just date sorry Martin, I no, 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 i used to just date saying. guys honestly i have that chip where i i genuinely didn't care to not get to know them like that's fine and now i'm like madly in love and i'm like it's They're, totally all in you know i but. have a really good friend who she only goes on dates to have sex so I think that's a yeah, stereotype. And she's a yeah. very strong, confident, don't yeah. need your buddy woman. So there are women out there who who are not needy for like a dude. And I'm not at all. I mean, if I didn't meet my boyfriend, I would not have a boyfriend at all right now. And I because some women just aren't programmed that way. I like being by myself. I very I like being isolated. So <laughs> it would be that you would find girls like that. But the girls that are hanging out at the club. They're yeah. probably not the girls that would be, do well with a hall pass because yeah. their life is a hall pass. <laughs> right, look, look, all, all I'm saying is, is I could see a girl, not even say a word to her, and want to have sex with her. Women aren't like that. No. Women well, need I don't know true. if all women, but that's I would say true. most women are not and, like that. I agree with that. And because of that, that's what scares me. Because there needs to be some kind of connection first before a woman has sex with a guy. A right. guy will you purely have, to like have something sex about them. Yeah, off something of more. I remember I did this uh, or just interview get something from them. <laughs> this interview with Dr. Benjamin Carney from the Rela- Relationship Institute. No one with the last name Carney could be a doctor. Oh yeah, I don't believe that. Yes, I forgot. <laughs> Dr. Benjamin Carney from the uh-huh. Relationship Institute. He's and my dad. he was talking about um, when when women go out for just sex. Um, they just go for like the prettiest guy ever. They o- they only care about that stuff. They just want to like conquer something or like have like, something to um, not be proud of, but to Post sort of show Instagram. off. It. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah, it's afterwards, like okay, thing. I had sex with him. He's really pretty, or I had sex with him. He's really famous. That's why you know people have sex with famous people. Um, but then they they don't really want anything to do with them afterwards. When they're looking for something more serious, they go for men where they have that deeper connection to them they want the thrill and the excitement and the the prettiness but um yeah but the, the to go on my comment before where i was talking about you know guys that i would sleep with if i had to see them again that's where it would get complicated for me so i would have to have that hall pass when i was somewhere else because it would be very strange for me to continue seeing that person. And, and, and let me ask you something mm-hmm. you get your hall pass right you have this fucking amazing sex with this person that you you know you and it's this amazing sex because there's no attachments to it. There's no responsibility required, right? Well, then now you're with your significant other again, and yeah. all of a sudden, your relationship with your significant other isn't going well. And you've already opened up that Pandora's box that I'm allowed to go fuck other people. 
Well, you're not going. What's going to make you want to work on your relationship when you're out there now, just going to fuck other people to get that out of your system? You know, to, no, good to point. Really? I totally you agree have. with you, Mo. Well, but good some, job. for some people, yeah. it does. Actually, I've heard about a lot of like men who cheat, um, and it actually does make their relationships better. They and can, that, and and you know, what? and I agree really with, mm-hmm. like with here's the thing with men, right? We fan we fantasize about other women just because it's our urge to want to have sex with a woman. But then once we have sex with that girl it's that done. we fantasize about. We're like, oh, well, th- then they become a normal person. Like every the fantasy's gone. It's like, oh, it's a normal person. She bitches. She complains. She wants me to take her out. All these things. And I don't want this fucking bitch. I want my girl who's at home. Yeah. I miss her. And I love I her. I want to go. And then you crawl back. And men to are your funny woman. once they're in love. They are in love. In love. Yeah, it's, it's really crazy. cute. It's so I'm not, gross. I'm not really sure what this chapter it. was saying. Well, but it's a you, good discussion you know, to have. You know, I, think. I, I think we answered it. I, I, my opinion. Most like is, I answered it. Is is that men is that hall passes don't work. My That's opinions my, that you sharing it together I think that you should have the same decision together whatever it's going to be and that you're able to either just be by yourself and fantasize or whatever you know you yeah. choose so that swing well not swinging well, not swing but you no, know I'm what? saying just being just you two without other partners and just being able to share and whatever that is that's what unless I unless you want to go that other route and you can totally handle it if you guys are both I'm sexually saying adventurous opinion. and yeah. like you know but, oh, I agree. I'm just yeah. trying to like say the other side of it as well. Yeah. Is like, because I know a whole community of people who are super open and they have like they all have the best marriages. They're so you know, happy, I, but I they know, all do it together. I too. know people who do the, the three crazy. way. Right? They'll bring in a, a girl. I think the only successful thing I've heard is when they bring in a girl for a three way because the girl is a bit curious. But there are always some rules established. Yeah, you have like, to have rules. Yeah. Like there are rules. Like the guy can't be just banging the other chick while you're just sitting there sitting in the corner watching. Waiting. You know, like you crawled up, curling, crying. Da-da. Like you know, there are like rules to the situation. So yeah, yeah. For those people, have fun with that. It's the golden rule book of screwing. <laughs> yeah. It's just so brought to you by the no. Askman Podcast. Exactly. Actually, it's the playbook, the man's playbook. Uh, so that concludes our segment. This week of I can't not say it ever. This chapter in the man's playbook. There so confusing. Did you say it's so sexy? Thank you. We picked a horrible name. God. Um, but yeah. All right, and then cool. we got. Well, who do we have on the second half of the show? Oh, today? we Let's have. Oh God, what the hell's her last name? Oh, uh, hold on. Uh, Andrea. Andrea. Sirtash. 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 Lurtash. I don't. We'll ask her Andrea when she's on our Sir-tash. call. Sirtash. Okay, that is her name. She wrote an amazing book for women on uh, cheat on your husband with your husband, and then a whole bunch of other books too. But she has some really interesting information for us. And then we have the lovely Chloe Klein, who is back with us. She's from Chicago. She's going to be single in the city with us today. Doing the Tinder talk. Little Tinder talk. And, you know, I got an email from the the maker of Tinder, <gasps> from the CEO. No way. Yeah, so, you know, hopefully we can do something with him in the future. Yes. All right. All that and more up next. All right, so I want to talk about one of our uh, newest sponsors who are freaking amazing. Ting? Yeah. I don't want people to get uh, confused with Ting just being the sound effects my boobs make. <laughs> Ting, ting. I'm so familiar small. with that. But Ting is a game changer. If you're like me, you're tired of spending literally $200 per cell phone bill. Ting is where it's at. It's mobile that makes sense. And it's truly contract free. There's no termination fees. So you pay ahead of time. And basically, you get exactly what you're paying for. Yeah, so I, I want to go down like some of these things that Ting has because I think that yeah. a lot of people get into trouble with overage fees or with with paying for things that they don't necessarily use. I know I had that when I first had my you know first cell phone package. So Ting has no contracts, no bundling or ride along services, no overage charges or penalties, unlimited devices on one plan, which is freaking amazing. Credits on unused service. No phone company ever does that. If you don't use it, they're like, oh, too bad, you screwed up and chose the wrong package. Right. No add on charges. No mysterious line items that are on your bill we're like what does this mean and why am i being charged 78 dollars? yeah they for- hide so much stuff in there so like, it's much. so angry it's like buying a car where they're like oh it's 3.99 and you you like walk out and it's 7.99 by the time that you're done but it's giving them your firstborn child it's and it's re- over it's really good because you can control basically how much you've used by just going online and using their um yeah really easy user-friendly you account. can monitor Online, yeah. And they have a mobile app that just came out. So if you're like me and you're never really on a computer, you can go check your minutes on your computer, I mean, on your cell phone and monitor it there. Yeah. And, and the other thing is probably you probably won't end up needing customer support because they're so awesome. But if you do, there's uh, no a real, hold. There's like no hold at all. It's really fast and it's um, like, in, you know, good English. It's like a real life yeah. person. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, you, you, it's okay. Let's just give like a little overview. It's a design your own phone plan and pay for what you use and uh, don't pay if you don't use it. 
it. That's yeah, pretty and, simple. And for all our guys that are looking for a little love on this high, you know, <laughs> you could use it as your bat phone. So go to askwomen.ting.com, get your $25 discount or $25 credit to apply towards your first bill. Uh, and honestly, you will thank us. You're going to save a lot of money. Tang, tang, tang. Tang, tang, tang. So stop paying tang, tang, for tang. Oh, no. <laughs> You're listening to the Ask Women podcast, a podcast one presentation. Boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. All right, welcome back to the Ask Women podcast. We have a really interesting woman on the phone. Her name is Andrea, and I don't know her last name. Siertash. Siertash. Okay, her last name is right. Andrea Siertash. She'll, she'll correct us if, if we're mm-hmm. incorrect about how we're saying her name right now. But she is fantastic. She wrote a book. She wrote a lot of books, actually. But she wrote a book that's called How to Cheat on Your Husband with Your Husband. So, Andrea, thank you so much for being on the call. Or on, on our show, sorry. Here. Oh, wonderful. So what, what is your last name? Sorry that we were probably saying it incorrectly. It's okay. My, my full name is Andrea Sertash, and my book Sertash. is called Cheat on Your Husband with Your Husband. Oh, cheat so ill-prepared. <laughs> I'm so ill-prepared. It's horrible. It's horrible. So, yeah, so can, can you tell us a little bit about your book and where the idea came or where the knowledge comes from, how you know that this, this works? Um, well, I've been a journalist covering the world of dating and relationships for about 10 years. Actually, the first book I worked on, How to Survive Dating, came out in 2003. Mm, so um, I've interviewed thousands of singles, of couples. I'm also a trained relationship coach. But it's really, I mean, really the, the stories and the um, case studies I share and the research I share comes from interviews and from research. So. That's that's kind of where the uh, quote unquote expertise comes from. No, that but that's that that's better than well, it's not better than experiencing yeah. yourself. But it's still like a great collection of information that you've learned mm-hmm. from interacting with so many people because you've seen what successfully works and what doesn't work. So- Absolutely, and I always bring a bit of my own experience into my books, but it's certainly never you know I don't write memoirs. It's, it's right. Like, <laughs> so, um, so I inv- I involve myself because I. I'm married or, you know, I've been single, I've dated. So I've shared my own experiences and what I've learned, but I very much shine the light on other people and um, stories that, that I find inspiring for the reader because, you know, we sometimes we feel like so alone when we're navigating relationships that can be tricky. Oh, so for it's sure. It's to, to hear from people. For sure. So what inspired you to write this book? Like what was the moment you wanted to get this word out there about cheating on your husband with your husband? <laughs> Well, when I got married, which was uh, already six years ago, but when I got married, I went to the bookstore to find um, fun relationship books uh, just because I was reading up on, you know, I was trying to figure out what the next chapter would be like. And everything in the marriage section was relationship rescue. It was all for people who were, you know, on yeah, the brink of, of divorce. Like, and yeah, needed depressing. To be yeah. saved. <laughs> and I like, just felt me. like oh. there wasn't anything for me. So I... Because um, you I just had, wanted again, to spice I've it up, it sounds like. dating and relationship advice for years. Um, so I wanted to write a more fun guide because part of the work of relationships is keeping the play alive. So I wanted to focus on that. So how do you do that? Because we, we have like lots of men who are listening. We have lots of women who are listening, some in relationships, some not in relationships, which, but I think that this information is still useful for, for both parties. So what have, what have you learned? What are three of the top ways to keep that fun, flirtatious energy in your relationship? Well, there are so many ways, but one big thing is, I think, first of all, being conscious of it. Marriage is a choice you have to make every day because, you know, you're not always going to feel like focusing on it. But it's really the littlest things. I have a chapter in that book called Sweat the Small Stuff because I think we think in terms of huge, big changes we need to make, but it's really the smallest tweaks you make. There was one study that came out that I referenced in the book that it's called the five to one rule for every negative interaction you have in a relationship you need five positive inter- interactions to negate it huh. so one of my big tips is keep depositing the positive even if it's one small gesture a day like bringing your partner coffee in bed i mean it could be the simplest thing but it will definitely help uh, keep the 
romance alive. Yeah, you know, I I, uh, I did my girl's laundry for her last night just because oh, I was doing that's my like laundry. That's like for chicks, dude. And Jesus. I just got a sexy little text from my girl. So I'm, 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 I'm telling you, I'm turned on by that. Cleaning and laundry play. are like the biggest foreplays for me lately. I'm like, oh, me too. Mm, I'm turned on by him doing it for his girlfriend. Like, that's how effective it is. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm going to clean them dirty I'm going to clean I'm going to fold it <laughs> so nice. Anyways. So, so what, you, you guys, it's chore play. It's not foreplay. Oh, it's foreplay. I like it's, it. It's a big thing. I like it. I like all the little yeah. little phrases that you have. Um, what is something else that got, that men and women can do for their significant others to keep that spark alive? Well, they have to keep the novelty alive. So, you know, it's really easy to get bored in a long-term relationship. Does that mean novelty stores? It could mean novelty mm. stores. Like, don't <laughs> pretend you're getting excited about that, Chris. Yeah, I just not. freaked you out <laughs> and you start going. I've never set foot in one. I never plan on it. <laughs> yeah. I am so interested I'll go on my for own. you, Kristen. <laughs> yeah. So much I, I didn't mean it that way, but whatever. <laughs> we'll take folks, it that way. I mean more like introducing new experiences regularly. So if you have date night, even if it's two hours, like decide to do something different. Even if it's eating in a different neighborhood, trying a different recipe at home, I mean, be tourists in your city. Like that kind of thing really injects excitement and spice. For sure, because it's different, because it's not, like, automated at that point. If you keep going to the same restaurant, it's like, oh, we're doing this again. There's nothing special exactly. about it, right? Would you Exactly. Would you kind of summarize it as, because when, when I'm thinking about this concept, I'm thinking about if I were to cheat on my current boyfriend, what, what would I want to do? Like, what would be the <laughs> What would be best, the impetus right? Right? Yeah. for and, cheating? And then do you bring that thought into the, the relationship, or is that too... T- touching like something that might be a little bit odd, uh, taboo, you know? No, no, it's a good question. Actually, I have a chapter called Cheat on Your Head, of course, Cheat on Your Husband with Your Husband. <laughs> I would hope and I so. talk <laughs> about traditional cheating and how to bring some of that energy in. So, I mean, one of the ways to do it is using technology. This sounds so simple. But Facebook, Facebook messaging. Like lasering your husband or something. Mm-hmm. What's that? <laughs> I was just joking. Are like you, Facebook <laughs> messaging. Or, 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 or yeah, dirty like, pictures. Like, I'm not saying sit there and poke them all day but like you know <laughs> on, fun, on huh? cheaters and singles use text messages sometimes in a sexy way or they flirt through email like if you read an old message that you sent to your partner on email you might find that person wow i was really witty and cute and sexy right. Ooh, <laughs> so just more mysterious that right energy back mm-hmm. uh, can do wonders i just had an idea like making another email address so that like when the sexy Ooh. A part of you wants to come out. You email from that email address. Like, oh, I like that. I'm trying to think of a name, and it's not. I really like funny. having an alter ego too. Yeah, like it's an like alter kind ego of fi- gets it fired up, and suddenly you can be like whoever you want to be. You know. Now, yeah. when you were doing when you were doing research for this book, did you talk a lot to couples who were stuck in a bad place, or did you talk to couples that were doing really well and like having Ooh, so question. much fun together? Really both. Um, yeah. I interviewed over a hundred couples, so I, oh. I interviewed. And I interviewed everyone from, you know, 21-year-olds to 85-year-olds. So that's it varies. Good. Um, gay and straight, men, women, mm. all, all kinds of people, different countries. Um, but the themes were kind of the same. And, you know, the couples who were hitting roadblocks obviously shared um, a lot of insight. And I used their experiences as homework in the book, like whatever they felt wasn't working um i had an exercise for the reader to work through that if they recognize themselves in it but for the most part the couples who kind of found the quote-unquote secret that that was super inspiring to cover their stories too now if someone were listening to this and they're in a marriage and they're wanting to spice it up or one partner's pretty dissatisfied with like the level of physical activity they're having would you suggest jump just kind of jumping head first into this or would you suggest maybe chatting about this with your partner beforehand saying I want to do this or could you just surprise them and start being behaving this way yeah I think it, it takes um, trying different things so it's really what your comfort level is some people I do think sex is one of those things it sounds really unsexy but it should be communicated if you're not happy and things aren't working it may be and you're, you don't want to put your partner on the defense so you don't want to say things aren't working why aren't you doing this why aren't you doing that of course that won't lead to a good result it's right. like using but, I statements that's how I would cheat on my husband just or cheat on 
never mind. I'm not going to even go there. (laughs) (laughs) But if you, but you know, if you frame it in a positive way, I love being with you. And I just want to figure out because some people actually, this is an insight I found while researching. Some people have a cutoff time when they're not receptive to sex. Like one woman, one mother I interviewed said, if my husband touches me after 10 p.m., the do not disturb sign is on. Like, I am not That's going interesting. to respond. Mine and is on, mine's on from about like 6 a.m. So to 12 constantly rejected. the next day. Yeah. Well, we, we on, on our last episode, we had um, this one guy writing in who was saying he's been married for seven years and they have two kids and uh, they haven't had sex in a long time. And he was really afraid of becoming this huge marriage cliche. But he mm-hmm. was saying that... Um, his wife would go to bed every night at 4 a.m. and never get into bed. So they wouldn't be in the bed at the same time. They would have their date nights, but they still wouldn't have sex. And he was he was just very, you know, distraught and confused about what he should be doing. So actually, my question is, should 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 you be doing this together? Like, is it different for men than it is for women in terms of saving your relationship? Or are there things that you should be doing on your own first to help save the relationship and then coming together as a couple? It's a bit of both. I mean, I don't think, I think effective relationships always start with you, with the individual. So if you're fighting all the time and you tweak how you communicate, you'll probably see a difference. Um, That said, we're partners. You know, we need to communicate, be honest, uh, trust our partners that they can receive what we're not happy about. And in this case with the the guy you had in the last few weeks, um, if he had the conversation with his wife, they may negotiate a time. And again, it sounds unsexy, but it's better than not having sex. Mm. Asking, you know, what's up? Like, do we want, do we, how are you feeling? Do you miss it as much as I miss it? And that kind of thing. And then, you know, figuring out maybe morning sex or maybe afternoon sex. You know, there, there are ways to tweak your schedule so it works better for you. But sometimes it's... Uh, First, getting clear with yourself on what you want, um, making any changes you can to improve the relationship, but then uh, involving your partner. I love for that. Sure. And one, yeah. one more question before we let you go, because th- this podcast is mainly for um, men, although w- women mm-hmm. do listen as well, which is wonderful, and we want these women to keep listening. But what if there was one tip that you could give to men who are not in relationships yet? Um, Mm -hmm. about how to navigate through their relationship from start to finish, like what they can continuously do all the way through a relationship to help not get to that point where they are stuck. Like how do you, you know, like how can you avoid doing that or being stuck? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Well, constant communication. Women, you know, there's an expression that men fall in love with their eyes and women with their ears. Mm Communication is really important. So um, just to keep that in mind, the number one reason, in my research anyway, that women cheat is because of a lack of attention. Mm-hmm. Um, totally. Men cheat because of a lack of approval. They feel the woman's trying to change them. She's judging them. He's not good enough. Women cheat because they feel the men aren't paying attention. They're not listening anymore. They're not being present. Whatever it is, yeah. they find that through another person. So you just have to. I mean, I really think the most important thing men and women want they want to be acknowledged, they want to be valued, they want to be respected. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you every day say, How can I, you know, make my partner happy today? And it doesn't have to be over the top, you know, fireworks and fancy dinners. Nice. Those small, tiny gestures, like Mo did with the laundry, will go a really long way to keeping things uh, peaceful. I love it's that. awesome. I yeah, love that. Well, advice. thank you. Thank you so much for being on our show. How do people get in touch with you or in contact with you? What I are your details? I have a Facebook fan page, which is, um, and I also have a website. So my name's Andrea Surtash, which is not super user friendly. <laughs> right. But um, what is user friendly? I actually have a new book out. And, oh, awesome. Um, it's it called It's Okay to Sleep with Him on the First Date and Every Other Rule of Dating Debunked. <laughs> and the website for that is Dating Rules debunked.com and you can find me uh, through datingrulesdebunked.com to make it easier. Awesome. And I found you on Twitter. So what is your, your Twitter handle? It's my full name again. I wish I had a Damn it, Andrea. <laughs> A-N-D-R-E-A-S-Y-R-T-A-S-H Awesome. Well, guys, go go follow her. Listen, read her books or women, go read her books as well. But thank you so much for being on our show. Yeah, thank you, Andrea. Thank you. It was fun.
Andrea was great. That is a cool idea for a book, and I think people should check it out. Because I, what is it called? Cheating on your husband? How to cheat on your husband with your husband? I think it's no, really not. Ch- it's not how to. It's cheat, cheat on, on your, your husband, husband with your, your husband. husband. Yeah, because it's all like the, you do. Sometimes you can't just know naturally how to be a great husband or how to be a great wife and how to really you know be present. And sometimes reading a book and getting a little bit of guidance from outside sources like us or from you know my website um, or fr- from uh, Andrea is fantastic. Yeah. I, uh, I had a buddy who uh him and his girl would like stage a rape scene so she'd what? be at a she'd be at a hotel and he'd show up to the hotel and slam That's on my the nightmare. door they, and you have break weird in and like start raping her that was like their thing so I, don't know if I, I like to dress up. being raped though the thing was what's weird about rape like if you're actually like ra- okay this is I, i've been holding off from ever saying this like i'm in public but like if i were to ever actually get like raped i would just pretend i was into it because then he wouldn't really be like yeah, T- turned you- on anymore because now I'm now he's just having See, sex. See, that's what you always think. In my mind, I think of like all the excuses I could possibly say if that were to happen. But I think I'd like I'd get no, that I'd one guy like, who's into it. I was, oh, I was you like have dead. AIDS? Awesome. Or oh, you're pregnant. Uh, or like well, so no, I don't even know. That's what I'm saying. You just go with it because what he's turned in turned on by is the fact that he's raping you. So if you just start going with it, then he's just only having sex with you. So he's no longer raping you. Yes, he's he's like, like, so and so he'll leave. Me. Yeah, oh. yeah. Oh my I'll god. Be like, oh my god. Say I love you. Number. Can I say I love you? Yeah, I yeah. Love you. maybe I that is a number? smart tactic. Yeah, I don't know. I hope, I hope really nobody dumb. listening. Oh my god! I, love I hope it. nobody listening ever has to go through that. But maybe that That's maybe that could work. I don't know. I know. Anyway, that was a weird <laughs> tangent to go on, but yep. interesting. I've always but loved now them. we have another amazing lady who you know we've all talked to before. Oh yeah. It is Chloe who's on the phone with us, and I I think that um, we are definitely going to be hearing more from Chloe because we have asked her to be our single gal in the city, yeah, relaying girl. information to single us. Single in the city with the tender top. <laughs> the Tinder talk. That's right. <laughs> so, Chloe, thanks for being back on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. So, what's going Ooh. on in Chicago with the single scene and Tinder? Any unplanned uh, pregnancies? Well, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, actually, Sorry. actually I, um, I did a little Tinder experiment last week. Oh, uh, tell, tell us. Tell us. Um, and it was, it was really fun. Um, <laughs> My friend and her husband are in town from London, and he's British, and he was just fascinated by this. So he was, he's like, he "What's said he this?" Was over <laughs> Friday dating, and he changed my profile pictures, and he was, you know, just like texting and heart guys, and you know, and it was really funny with his British commentary too, because he would be like, "That guy's a wanker." <laughs> so, no right. Uh, I, um, so but he was picking guys for you. So he changed your profile picture, like your what, Tinder what, overhaul, yep. like to, so he that it would be more attractive. One right then, I mean, I was hanging out like I hadn't showered. I was at the pool, just hanging out with him, drinking a glass of wine and a t-shirt. And he's like, "No, this is how guys want to see you. This is how I would oh. I would want to date you if I saw you. Like, if I don't want to see you out at a bar looking all you know like dressed up. He's like, we're doing this experiment. And so he took a picture right then and posted it up and made me, you know. Leave it. He's like, we're just going to try it. We're going to see what happens. Um, and so then he start, but then he would also initiate all the conversations with guys, too. And so oh, I think was, he's like, gay. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, like, way he's, like, he's like grabbing her cell phone from he's her. I want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It was so funny. He, like, he would write, um, ask me a question, um, you know, to the guys. So that, like, if no. he would come back, you know. It's, so like a, it it's like a power position. I get it. I understand. This is interesting. Okay, sorry, I keep interrupting you. Oh no, you're fine. Yeah, and he. Um, it was hilarious just what guys have come up with, you know. And um, and you at some point feel bad for these dudes on the other end because you're like, there's about 14 people sitting around analyzing your responses. Right, and and this coming from a dude. Um, uh, yeah, and it's, it's a guy, right? So, you know, and he's just like making fun of them, you know. And so he like one time uh, he said, you know, ask me a question, and the guy wrote like, how was your weekend? And um, my friend's husband Craig was like. Oh, come on, buddy. You can do better than that. You know? <laughs> yeah, boring. Like, Next. Just giving them <laughs> shit for it. it. And like, he's like, no, sorry, Chloe. You can't, you can't go out with a guy who isn't witty. So, sorry. I like oh, it. That's a good screen. So, did you process. find anybody, though, that was worthwhile who had witty responses? That your your guy yeah, friends would date? Actually, we, we did. But then um, he, you know, because it goes by GPS. And um, so, this guy was like, you know, 11 miles away or something. <sighs> And um, so 
but the next day he showed up in my Tinder as being like a thousand three hundred fourteen <gasps> miles away. From he was so traveling. He was for the night, you know. Oh. And so then you're like, well, there's no point. And. Dang no, it. I, I, th- I thought you were going to say he showed up like three feet away. And I know. Like, that's what I thought you were going to say, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hello, I've been Chloe. watching you, Chloe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can go my feet, but uh, Tinder, you can't. You can go, the closest you can go is a mile. So, oh. Is, yeah, I'm feet get scary, right? Then it's like they're it's just, like, I'm right behind you. Staring at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is freaky. Yeah, that, I'm, yeah, I'm a little too paranoid for that. So. That's crazy. <laughs> I, need, I need at least a mile radius. <laughs> so then what were the results from this experiment? Because basically the only experiment is that your male friends know how to lead a lot of other men on, basically. But Right, yeah, that, yeah, that's pretty much it. And <laughs> I actually kept off that profile picture that he told me to keep up um, just as to keep kind of keep continue the experiment and see how guys respond to it. Yeah. Um, because it's just, you know, it's just me with my hair off and my sunglasses and um, just kind of sitting outside. and I'm A laughing. low-maintenance girl. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's you really know, it's interesting that you got yeah, but you got you got me, that like, insight you know? from a man because that's really yeah. essential. Like I will always say when my girlfriends, you know, this is in the past before I started learning more about men, but when my girlfriends would come to me to ask advice on guys, I would always say ask my husband. He, he he can give you a much better answer. I can comfort you and tell you you're awesome and that guy's a dick, but right. like my husband can tell you exactly what's going on in his head in like five seconds. So, and that's like the basis mm-hmm. of my business, you know, like why ask a man how to get a woman when you can ask a woman? So I, I think that's right. great advice that he gave to you that everybody listening should be taking on. If you want to figure something out about how your online profile is doing, don't ask your female friends how it looks. Yeah. Ask your male friends how it looks. And then, mm-hmm. yeah, know, exactly. But just don't let them make you like and, look too slutty and like. And eager. vice versa for men. Yeah, <laughs> ask absolutely. Dudes, ask right. your ask your chick friends. Yeah. yeah. Well, what right, other what right. other single stories do you have? Anything exciting and interesting? Any new dates, Chloe? Well, I do. I do have some interesting ones. The whole reason he took over um, was because of this last date I went on last week mm. on Tinder. Uh-oh. And, um, I kind of knew ahead of time. Like well, I knew I was kind of rolling the dice. This one. Um, because his pictures were just, like, really funny, and I wasn't super attracted to them, but, like, we had we had a lot of really funny text conversations, and I was like, who knows where this is going to go, you know? Right. Um, but he showed up, and he showed up late, which I'm kind of a stickler about on first date. Like, I feel like a guy should always be early. You know? Yeah, did he know. Be on time. Um, and he showed up late, and, and he, tra- like, I'm at the end of the bar, and someone just goes, like, hey. And I'm like, oh, hey. And he's got this cup of soup. What? He's like, do you want some soup? Yeah, I'm not kidding. <laughs> what? I, I, I He's holding it, soup. standing up? Well, I mean, yes. the important question is what kind of soup was it? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, uh, no, I'm, I'm, hi, nice to meet you. I'm okay, though. I don't know. I don't want any soup. Yeah, <laughs> what? Like, if it was split pea, I'd be well, like... Okay, buddy, I think you can leave. But if it was like chicken <laughs> jump over, over but if it was like laugh. chicken tortilla, I'd be like, hey, come this way. <laughs> anyway. Um, but he was like, when he was like, his hands were all in it. Like, he was like sticking his hands yeah. in it. Her hand, his hands were in, in the, the soup? Skirt. Wait, is yeah. this him trying to be funny? He was, he was no. Was this, oh. like, was this like scary movie where he had the gimp hand? He's like, let me get that with my good hand. <laughs> 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 that is like that. Yeah. Wait a second. So he walks in. Op- he walks in late, offers you soup, and then sticks his hand in the soup. <laughs> yeah. He's like, is- he's like keeping out the, like, the, like, sit in his tortilla soup, and he's, like, keeping out the corn and, like, the beans and stuff, and I'm like, <laughs> what? Oh, you know what he's, oh, you know what he's saying? So badly. You know what he's and saying? And then I look at him to get a drink, and we're in a dark bar, and his pupils are super small. And that's not something, like, I'm not, like, looking at someone's pupils, but it was a you point where it was, it. like, what is going on? Oh yeah. my god, he's on something. This guy's high on something. I don't know what. I don't what? know what does your people. Oh shit. my god. I'm like, this guy's high. I think I but I think what he was trying to communicate to you by sticking his hand in the soup is to say, Look, I'll stick my hand anywhere. <laughs> He'll stick it in that oh panty soup. Oh, oh preview for no. later tonight. Uh, I'm not even concerned Wait if it's a second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Soup. No, get out. Wait a second. So this guy comes. I totally just threw up in my mouth. I know. Like Wait, so when awful. are your people's is that dial no dilated is bigger. So what is yeah, small? When you're, when you're on cocaine it just indicates the lighting in the room. When you're on cocaine is when your pupils are big. What about when really? they're small, though? When, yeah. when they're small, it's lighting it's in the room? It's just lighting well, yeah. in your so, room. Your eyes just so you're in a bright yeah, space with a guy with his hand in soup. This is very horrible. So Jeez. you left, obviously. Or no, you're really nice. You probably stuck around for an hour and a half and chatted yeah, with him. Yeah, well, you know, I always have a contingency plan. Like, I'm like, I'm going to 
contingency plan. I'm always like, I have to be, you know, this place, this time, meeting these friends. And so I had an out already, but I was okay, like, God, this is going to be a really long hour. Like, holy shit. What? You know, I can't believe I have to stick around for this. And what? then I was going to ask the weirdest questions. Like, he was like, oh, so your brother lives in the suburbs, huh? Because, you know, we're just talking. Yeah, yeah, lives in the suburbs. Um, he's like, why don't we go visit him? What? Like, what the hell are you talking about? Oh, no, wow. uh, I don't think so. You know, nope. He's like, yeah, what? he's a psycho. Okay, so let me ask a question. What yeah. about his profile made you want to even go out on a date with him to begin with? Because his pictures are really funny, and I'm such oh. a sucker for funny. I, I am too. And, yeah. And then, like our our conversations were hysterical. Like I was cracking up. So did you? Probably because. He- high the whole time so he's hysterical when he's high or something so, i don't know but like did you have a funny um, conversation in real life um not until we met right okay so when you met and you were together he was cracking yeah. you up still um it was more nervous laughter i think right. um, it was more yeah. fear i want to be laughter. murdered right. on a date from a guy who has <laughs> the whole time sitting there started with, with hand clam right. chowder it's but disgusting that, hand. but honestly i mean i don't yeah. think guys really understand how important humor is to a woman any a, a woman right. that's worth talking to i think personally yeah so that's just you yeah. know to tell to tell you guys something out there you didn't say oh he had really good looking profile pictures they you said they were really funny profile pictures yeah, yeah. so it's you know it's Show just not person. acting yeah. like an idiot on the date. You can have a sense of humor, but it does lure women in. For sure. And yeah. it's not about being a comedian and being super funny. It's about being no. light and not taking it too seriously. Right. Oh, horrible story. Well, Chloe, do I you want know. do you want to stick around for um analyze this for this week's analyze this yeah. questions? Absolutely. Yay. Sure. Okay, cool. So and I keep us posted on uh what happens with the new pick. Oh, on soupy yes, hands I want to and... know what happens for sure. But, yeah. but Chloe's gonna keep coming back. I want to hear more from her because I think she's gonna have more interesting stories oh. to share. <laughs> probably, probably. Sadly you will. But you know what? They're they're great stories after. One thing I learned from backpacking a long time ago was any horrible situation ends up being a good story for later on. Like, that's how I made my friends in hostels when I was that's backpacking. Right. Friends? Bad... Isn't that your virginity? Oh, yes. <laughs> There's that. I had a lot of fun things happen when I was backpacking. Men build cars and men build websites. And men could build great websites at squarespace.com. It's an all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Right now, if you go to squarespace.com and use the offer code ASK9, that's ASK9, it's going to save you 10% off. Squarespace has over 20 highly customizable templates for you to choose from to create a unique website for your small business. Everything's super easy. It's drag and drop. You could use the drag and drop to add content from your desktop and even rearrange elements of content within a page. You can make your own page, buddy. Make it look good at squarespace.com. You could easily connect to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Instagram, Google, all these different social services that are so important to your small business nowadays. It's incredible and easy to use. But if you want some help, Squarespace has an amazing support team that works 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if it's Christmas and you want to post something, you could call them. If it's Thanksgiving, you want to post something, you could call them. It starts at just $8 a month. $8 a month, man, that's like buying a girl a drink at the bar. And it includes a free domain name if you sign up for a year. So listen, men, this is your call to action. Start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website. When you decide to sign up at squarespace.com, make sure to use the ASK9 and get 10% off. Squarespace has been great. They help support this show, so you should support them. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. You're listening to the Ask Women Podcast, a Podcast One presentation. Boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. All right, so here is the first question. Hi, beautiful ladies and the great Mo. I have been following a girl. I love that. I know. (laughs) I know. They're getting even more on our emails. I have been following a girl on Instagram for a while now, but not really interacting at all with her except for liking very few pics on her page. In the beginning of this, I did not have interest in meeting her. I just thought she was cute, but now after seeing through her post how she's not a shallow girl, I have gained interest in actually meeting her. She's not just hot. She has a big heart that sincerely loves poor children. Is it possible? (laughs) Wild card. Oh, my God. She loves poor children. 
Is it possible? Is it possible to start a relationship through Instagram? This actually that happened. What's her name? To the suicide girl. Yeah, the suicide, suicide girl. girl. What, what was her name? Bruin. Bruin yeah, she yeah. started a relationship just through their pictures, through images. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay. So, is it possible? Blah, blah blah. This would be our only connection. How should I go about it? Should I just compliment her photos and start something? I feel this is what every other guy is doing already, but how can I be different? Can, can he, like, make a photo Kevin. specifically for her, or is that, that, could be creepy. Is that creepy? Well, the thing is, with poor children? I think so. Okay, that could... <laughs> no. Him just, like, yeah, taking... Don't make, a, don't make a photo for her. That's, like, wait, it's, like... Yeah, that's he's, like, in the ghetto. Like, got it, got I agree just with Just no Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just me and the kids again. <laughs> yeah, that's like way too much. So actually, Chloe, I'd ask you. So what do you think he should do? Well, I think, you know, it, it's a gamble, but I would well, obviously it's taking a gamble anyway, but I'd go back to the humor thing. And yeah. maybe like, make you know, kind of like a witty sort of comment on you know, a well thought out one. Uh, you know, obviously you don't want to make fun of the poor kids or something. Right, like, whoa, but, they haven't eaten in a long time. Or something. They look hungry. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to hell. Oh, horrible but, people. We're going to hell. Horrible people. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, kind of like, and that'll spark her interest by, you know, I mean, women fall for funny you know, that's, it's really kind of classic. Yeah, maybe, I, I, maybe I would, be the maybe leave funny a, comments yeah. on her pictures. Yeah, I have a few, be that guy. Yeah, but don't like make fun of her and make her feel self conscious. Do it in a you know right. in a, a good light way. But um, I would love to have more detail on this because I don't know if she's following him. Right. You know, we don't know how close proximity wise they are. You yeah. know, so it's kind of like there's some right. ho- there's some holes. I mean, it, you know, it can be done, but. You know, if he posts a picture for her and she's not following him, she'll never see it. Yeah. Exactly. You know, he can tag her, but it might just come across creepy because they haven't had a first interaction. So, I mean, yeah. if there's yeah, any why way. Why is he following her? I don't use Instagram, well, so the, I can't actually comment on this Yeah, we one. don't know how he found her, but I would suggest just that if you go on the Internet, you can Google anybody's name. And I know it sounds kind of creepy, but she may have a Twitter account also so i would try to connect over something that is more two-way street yeah because then he can send a message you know but right, he, can well, com- he can comment on her i listen like a direct I've message seen people who are instagram they are very they are all over their comments so like oh how many people like this how many mm-hmm. people like commented on it so you're on it so if some random guy starts ma- if he does make like a funny light-hearted joke that shows that he's he's still really confident in himself and uh i'm, I'm not gonna start giving thing- templates right now but if he does reach out in that way I think he could start a banter with her. Over I do too. I Instagram. do too. If someone did it to me, I would feel slightly uncomfortable because I know everyone else can see those comments. So if if we wanted to take it further, and all of a sudden someone sees me put like, "Oh hey, why don't oh, you yeah. email me?" and everyone's seeing this, it's see, like I, I my, like a direct yeah a direct thing just between you guys. I think that's better. Right. So, so you're, saying, you're thinking about what sane people would like in their regular comfortable lives, not about people who are attracted to each other because if they are attracted to yeah but you I'm could be attracted out my email yeah but you could be attracted and sane i'm just no, saying no, like sorry, <laughs> but yes maybe not sane exactly but i'm just saying like when you are in that attraction phase if you have you if you have built up something uh, you might put yeah email me here like i wouldn't think twice about doing that and, on my instagram and yeah. look buddy at the end of the day she's got to be able to look at your pics and just be into you based on how your pics look because you know brewing with her guy I'm sure she got a lot. She's got a lot of followers on Instagram. Um, I'm sure a lot of guys contact her. But at the end of the day, this guy was contacting her and following her. She checked out his pictures, and she was attract. There was an equal attraction there, and that took it yeah, to the next level. For sure, you can't fake that. Yeah. So, look, man, if you got a great personality, it's going to be hard for it to show through Instagram. I suggest doing things the old-fashioned way, going out into the real world and shaking a real person's hand and getting it the real way. Yeah. But if you do want to do it that way, be funny, be interesting. Yeah. Also, post photos that are interesting that would spark her. Yeah, you want to be interesting as well. As well. Yeah. Exactly. Not you don't have to go post a picture of you with poor children, but show that you also <laughs> yes, have you a, do. Or, but show that you have a heart. Like if that's why you find her really impressive, like you want to show that there's something interesting about you. If he knows that she loves poor Poor children. She must be posting pictures of poor children. A lot, right. a yeah. lot. So I mean, I wonder- <laughs> it's kind of bizarre. But where is she finding all these poor I children? By the way, is she like? Yeah, where is she? Is she like I don't an- know. She's a saint. No, he didn't say where he lives. I have absolutely She's no just idea. Mama Teresa. Yeah. But Kevin, I hope that answers your question. All She's right. She's probably just at a modeling Hi. agency and all the kids are I know. Are She's like, oh, here. Um, Hi, ladies and Mo. I've been listening for a few weeks now and 
confident Karen story. Oh, confident Karen. Oh, confident <laughs> was Karen. was one I really related to. I love Karen. I feel so bad about okay. saying that about her. I, so, okay, just to give you a little background, Chloe, there was this woman mm -hmm. who had written into us, and she said a lot of her friends say, um, I'm a little too confident or something. She's too confident she's just too to com be, be approached. Oh. Yeah, yeah, too confident too to be approached. And so we hadn't spoken to her yet, but so we, we were just like, oh, that means you're bitchy. And like most likely, and just like had this whole wrong Ripped view her of her. Apart. And then she came on the show the next week and she was like the sweetest, most sweetest. awesome girl. Like I would hang out with her totally. And by the end, we were trying to all set her up with our friends because um, she lives in Los Angeles. But um, so, yeah, so Confident Karen's story was really was one I really related to. I'm in much the same predicament, minus the screaming. And one of the comments that you're that your intern made was, if you're so confident, why don't you ask these guys out? Well, I do that. I often put myself out there. I'm used to going after what I want, and that includes men. I'm comfortable being the aggressor, and guys don't really approach me, so I've taken that on. According to my dad, this comes off as desperate, and he says that women shouldn't ask men out. First of all, different generation. Don't listen to your father. Uh -huh. um, there's a guy who I was pursuing at one time, who I'm now friends with, who told me that the whole time he was intimidated by this. Anyway, I'd like to get yours uh, especially Mo's opinion on this. Ooh. Should I ask guys out because they oh. aren't asking me? Rooting for Karen. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, oh, oh great. It's oh. I don't think she had her name on here, so I don't know who 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 also confident something. Well, I'm sure she listens to the show, so she'll get it. You know, I think she should just put. You got to first of all put yourself out there, right? And guys are going to approach you in a social setting, and you need to be open to that. Um, I, I don't think it's a bad thing for a woman to ask a guy out. It no. just depends on how you, you word it, you know. Don't word it to the guy who's not giving you attention. You know, you don't want that kind of attention. But if, you know, you meet some guy somewhere, whether it be a bar, whether it be at a coffee shop, whether it be at yoga, and there is a kind don't of... Don't date a guy you meet at yoga. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I don't know. I, I agree with that. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, somewhere where you meet someone differently, you guys are having a conversation, there is a connection between you two, then, you know, link to it. You know, well, let's let's get together sometime. But that's, yeah. not, that's not what she's asking. So she... she so Good job. Is it, Good so, job, Mo. Sorry. <laughs> But like, but I, sorry, great answer. But she's saying she is doing all those things already. Yeah. And so she's not saying she's unapproachable and guys don't approach her, but she does approach guys. She goes after what she wants. She has no problems doing that, and she's really happy doing that. So what's the question? The, See, quest, the question is like, okay, maybe a part of the question was correct that he was answering. Um, is it okay to ask guys out? But I like the one part that you said where it's about asking them out in, in the right way yeah. so that you're not aggressively going out. And I, again, I don't know how this girl is doing it. It's about still being feminine. And this friend of yours now who was intimidated by it, he's got to man up and get some freaking balls. Yeah. Because if he was intimidated by it, then that's not the kind of man that you want to be dating anyway. See, I think that there's a difference between just going and being open to being asked out and putting yourself out there like she can initiate the approach versus asking the guy out. Because when you ask the guy out, that takes the fun for him out of it. Am I right, Mo? Like yeah. You, you want to be the pursuer. So when you... Let, when you take that away from a guy, it kind of switches things up. But I think she could definitely keep approaching guys. But I do think it's their job ultimately to kind of take that lead. It's just like it's in your nature. You but, know? Yeah, but what if they don't? Team yeah. off for yeah, it. Yeah, I, you think, know? I think that's just like I think you're. I couldn't agree more. It's like that careful balance between like initiating the approach, but yeah. not being the one to initiate the next step. But, let, I mean? but like, let's say you but like leading a guy into doing that. And yeah. If he doesn't, then, then he doesn't. You know, and then he's not that guy that you want anyway. Right. If, if he turned off by you approaching him, then that's not a guy you, you want to date. Exactly. So, what are some ways to give hints? Like, what are the way to tee him off? Right. I, I think you know body language. Give him the eye contact. Face him. Uh, you know, smile, laugh at him. But what about if a girl says, oh my God, I love doing that. We should do that sometime. Is that too intimidating? No, I think that's fine because then at least it just opens it up to him saying, well, listen, what are you doing this day? We could do that together. You know, at least uh, it gives him the idea for him to then take the initiative to close the deal. I, I I actually think that those are perfect responses. Good job, Haley. That was good. I like it. Oh, yeah. um, and, and maybe be a little touchy, you know. Yeah. Maybe gra you know grab a guy's not like you know grab his shoulder, just touch him in a way that's like, oh, this girl is touched. Now it's a physical thing, right? So this girl feels comfortable touching me. I got a got a chubby from it. I'm gonna try and go next oh. level. <laughs> oh God! Don't say chubby. I know. We all just threw, like, we, no, I got, we all just threw up in our mouths. We all threw up in our mouths. I got a semi-pro. <laughs> and I'm about to go full pro. No, full puke. You got, full puke. You got Little League. 
<laughs> they got Little League downstairs. <laughs> T-ball. No. I feel like we've talked a lot about Mo's penis lately for some reason. Ugh. Actually, Kristen has. Awesome. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> She's so scared of penises except mine. It's great. I know. Seriously. <laughs> God. Okay. Here's the next one. Hi, Marnie, Kristen, Haley, and Mo, and Chloe. How are y'all? I hope you are doing well and Danny. Great job with this podcast. Um, not only is it informative insight- and insightful, but very entertaining. And it's an absolute... What is that word? Oh, no. Don't put me to the uh, test. Which one? A-U-R-A-L. It's an absolute... It's an ab- absolute... Let me see. Or oral it's pleasure. A- anus? I, but read the rest of it. <laughs> pleasure to listen to Kristen's rather sexy voice. No, he did not yes, say that. Yes, that's why I wanted Kristen's to show it to you. Kristen's sexy voice? I know. Oh. I was like, what? I, my he, chub went away. He must be into children. <laughs> he must be into children. It's a Chicago, I, you have a Chicago accent for being yeah, East Coast. Yeah, I sound like a 12-year-old Minnesotan mom. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's his thing. No I'm 12 yes. days. His name is Jack Bates. He's obviously into that. In Minnesota, it's his turn on. Yeah. Anyway, oh, his, anyway, my question is um, to you is that I often hear women, uh, when talking about women that they mature faster than men. That got me wondering as to why it happens. My theory is that because usually men desire younger women, therefore those younger women uh, up with older men and hence have those experiences which oh okay they grow up with older men and have more mature experiences and make them mature faster to their male counterpart um jack bates i actually did some research after i read this one um and so these this well, i'm so confused on the question so the basically the question is why are why do women mature faster than men and so um ba- the consensus online <laughs> which is obviously the authority on most of these answers <laughs> scientific is, yes exactly it has never been proven that women mature faster mentally than men it has been proven however that women mature physically quicker this sure. is mostly due to an early earlier release of hormones so i think maybe like physically maturing faster just makes you feel older which makes you do things yeah. quicker and as you're before like older guys usually like well, younger it's, girls. It's, I thought mentally the, too though we're just more of an evolved well they species. were they were saying no. our, our girls iqs are higher than boys iqs and then later on men's iqs sorry ladies are higher than women's yeah. iqs as they because get older? of height because that's we, what i was telling you before because it, we start using makeup and then right they and then it just all goes yeah. away well look yeah. I, I think why this is women have a a menstrual cycle when they need to have kids okay our society is built that you need to be married to have kids or you're looked down upon so i have a feeling that when these women are feeling these feelings of reproduction and stuff like that they're looking for a long-term mate to settle with whereas men we're always wanting to spread our seed and get it in and fit it in as many times as possible before a lady tries to lock us down. Gotcha. And so that was for, Dr. Mo. Thank so you. So for most of us men, it that takes us till 40 to finish it out. <laughs> Dr. Mo got his degree in Mexico. See, yeah. <laughs> I got it from the University of Mexico. <laughs> but I, I, I honestly think it's because, like, like I I didn't go through puberty um, at a, a really young age. I went through it Me really either. late. I was yeah, 18. We about it. Me too. You guys are freaks. Yeah, I know. Anyway. I, I know. was scared something was wrong with I'm me. A- I was called was bee like bites for the longest time ever because <gasps> I had no boobs, and then oh I God. showed so them. Your boobs today, oh yeah, they're my big God. ones. I know. I didn't have armpit hair. hair too. And my no friends would make way. fun of my armpit hair, my lack of armpit hair, and I would cry. I would, would be you? like, "Thank you." I know. It looks I know. I should have been so excited. <laughs> Um, so but, but that's the thing. Like, if, if uh, mo- they're saying women physically mature faster, so I would think as you're starting to change in that way, where you're seeing more adult-like features, I would think that there would be some connection to the brain. It's, there's a, an evolutionary reason for it. I'm sure. I don't know what it is. I'm sure it's yeah. for reproduction, obviously, um, to have children. But uh, I, I don't think, know that that's been proven. I also think that women don't like to goof around as much as men, and I think that can <laughs> come across when you're pubescent or 18 or 21 it can come come across Hmm. very immaturely because i know my boyfriend constantly just wants to goof around and he's like punching me and like whatever and i mean i'm not very mature for but it's (laughs) but it's in his brain to do that but he's very mature pays his bills on time blah 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 so i think it may be a perception thing as well like what we enjoy is not what they enjoy we might like something a little more sophisticated just as women and 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 guys want to go around and and wrestle on each other exactly i think not that i don't want to do that too women get emotionally attached during sex for the for the most part i want to say younger women that's biological by the way there's yeah. like a ho- hormone that's released when we have sex that makes us say like i want to be, be with this, this man, person raise exactly. his child exactly which, makes us make very bad decisions which makes them no. want to be in more relationships than say men who are just looking to get their rocks off and move on to the next all one. right we already got the metaphor 
<laughs> we got, we got, hey, all right. Spread the Every seed. Time you talk, have you guys seen get the in the hole. I leave slow. Wait, wait. What's out here? What do you oh, say? This is the trend where um, women are dating younger men. Out yes, Demi Moore West. started it. And, and it's not like it's, it's not a huge age difference, but it's between like you know for you know two to four years. I feel like that's a good um, trend because men die younger. They they do. It's so good, and it just happened. I noticed in the past. I don't know, a few years where um, there's a lot of, even mar- there's a lot of marriages where the woman is a few years older. Yeah. Um, a lot of long-term relationships where it used to be such a faux pas, and now it's, you know, it's not. But it's kind of like, it's one of those things that doesn't quite add up because, you know, like you are saying, like, we've always thought that we were supposed to, you know, men are supposed to be, you know, yeah. um, not mature as women just because based on their age, but... I don't know, maybe well, I, think, I think there's those certain men that aren't that maybe like to function on a little bit more of a mature level, and so they have to look to the older, yeah. Yeah. older women. When I was in my 20s, I, I've hooked up with a bunch of like 35, 40 year old women, Grandmas. and it was they it must was, have been all over your brain. Oh, they love the mojo, but it they was love that back sweater. <laughs> listen, they love my back sweater, but no, look, it was a it was a great experience for me. First of all, because it taught me what a confident woman is and what I should look for when when dealing with a confident woman, but also sexually, mm-hmm. it taught me to just slow down, Buck. Oh, right. you know, that's interesting. They can teach you. You don't have to pump away here. Uh. It's about everything else and taking your time and the foreplay and all that. And I was such an experienced lover after dealing with these older women <laughs> that I well, became a dragon slayer. Woman, I had like, to really go home. Oh, <laughs> my God. So what is happening to Mo? Mo Joe. Okay. <laughs> that is from Ke- uh, Jack. Jack. So I hope that answered your question. It didn't really answer any question. but uh, Thanks, I, Jack. I like that you think my voice is sexy. Yes, exactly. But that's we're that's, that's scientific the main thought, guys. That's, exactly. And that's why I put this question in because of the <laughs> wonderful compliment to our lovely and beautiful Kristen. Shh, thank you. Do we have time for more questions? Yeah, let's, let's do a couple more. Okay. And wrap it up. Okay, so, hi guys, I live in the UK near London. Enjoy listening to your podcast. I have read The Game, and do you guys know what The Game is? Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. the, the biggest pickup book ever. It's like a multinational huge. bestseller. My friend Neil Strauss wrote it. Um, I have read The Game and got a few programs from dating experts, but I have not had any, su- had any success with women. Because you're not I've not had to much. Marnie. Yeah, exactly. Stop going to guys. I'm getting comfortable talking to women and I am, I'm attracted to, but some of the advice I have done has worked. Other dating advice has landed me in hot water with the girls losing her temper. My question is twofold. Dating experts keep saying a woman will tell you how to attract her. What are they talking about? And then I'll ask the second part of the question afterwards. You would women will that. tell you how to attract her? Yeah, I've heard guys say that before. I don't get oh, that. Oh, you just got to follow her because she'll give you all the words. Part of it, that is from NLP, Neuro Linguistics Programming, because it involves active listening for you. So you you can plant an idea in a woman's head. Um, like, for example, you can say to a woman, you know, what, what was your favorite time in all of your childhood? Oh, I love when you look at me like this. Marnie just gets these sexy yeah. eyes. Um, <laughs> So how how are you connecting to me though? Okay, by so, saying so that? then you give your answer and let's say, yeah. oh, the happiest time was when I went to Disneyland with my parents. Okay, so you're and then you start describing the Disneyland experience and you start using not sexual words but like w- like words that are attractive and fun to you that would that trigger would stimulate play, that would stimulate you. you exactly. So then. If I were listening to that, I would then use those words to also continue conjuring up those feelings of intimacy, of conne- whatever it is. I am horrible at NLP. That's, um, that's but it is. Oh, it's man- manipulative mojo. It's, it's, it's crazy. Um, but for a lot of guys in the pickup artist industry, that's, that's what they do, which I do not condone at all. Manipulation of women is horrible. Never do it. And disgusting and horrible. Only if it ends in sex. It's R- exactly. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so <laughs> creepy. It's like they're faking who they are. It's like they're not faking who they are. They're trying to bring something out in you. Kind of what we were talking about before. They're, like a they're few doing like a ago. psychological game. I don't yeah, like that at Where it's all. like the dopamine. It's about being more mysterious to create and, dopamine. And look, for, for our listener here, it sounds like he's way too invested in these. Look, these books are a, it's like to teach you to open up your mind, to kind of give you some rules. And then you take it out into the real world and you make it your own exactly you, when you break the rules amazing. you bring you to the book you yeah. know because each person is different if you're honest if you're who you are people are going to f- be open to that and let down their walls from that learn from these books in terms of what to look for but at the end of the day you got to make it your own buddy and i'm glad that you're confident talking to women 
but now work on closing the deal with women by doing it your way, not by the book. I'll way. say he's doing the right thing because mm-hmm. he's learning what works, what doesn't work, yeah. what works for him, what doesn't work for him. He's practicing. I always say go read everything out there because people will always write into me and say, uh, I don't know which, which product to buy. Should I buy your product or this product? And I'm like, you know what? Go read everybody's yeah. advice because everybody has free advice that they give out. You know, yeah. I have and a free newsletter. Ways they're attracted to people. Exactly. It's like not the same thing works on everybody. Exactly. Yeah, but, I need to like synthesize all of those ideas and just like mold exactly. and make them mm-hmm. yours then. Like, exactly. I have, I have this one newsletter that says, okay, print out all of the newsletters that you get from like five of the top dating experts that you want to listen to, put them in an order, and then try whatever it is they say that you should be doing for one week. If that works for you, great. If it doesn't, throw it out and go on to the next one and build your own system. Exactly what Mo was saying. And that's what it sounds like that this guy is doing as well, which I think is great. But Good, any man. anytime, okay, I'll take a step back. People who are pickup artists um, and in that community, these guys are just doing trial and error constantly, right? And so what they're teaching is about what worked for them. And that's why they're wanting to teach their lessons for other people so that they can save time for them. Doesn't mean that what they say is the Bible and what they say is going to work for you. It means that you, you can take a piece of their information, a piece of somebody else's information, and then construct your own system so that you can start advising other people on how yep. you did it yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, but the next part that he asked is, um, and how do you do push-pull properly, and when is the right time to apply it? Thanks for the great show, Brian. So push-pull, do you know what this is? No. Okay, so it's a pickup artist tactic. I'm so horrible with this stuff. I should actually probably know more of it. But it's when you, like, push and pull a woman away. So you, you like, get her, not, like, physically pulling her close, but, like, you give her a little bit of intimacy saying, like, you are just beautiful. But I'm not into beautiful women. And then you push them away a little bit. So it's like like you're getting them close. Yeah, exactly. There's some mystery there. Mm -hmm. So what was the question? How do you do it? I'd be like, so you like I, I ugly frogs? That. Like I do that all the time. What? Women actually That's part it, of it, man. But but you know, I feel push pull works more in situations where you see a girl on a consistent basis. Where one day I see this girl that I might work with, I'm the sweetest guy and opening up that side. Then the next day I'm kind of this dick who's ignoring her. And then the next day I'm kind of teasing her. And then I'm right when she's about to be fed up with me, I'm back again to the sweet guy. And I like every part but the dick part yeah, yeah, it's not, 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 like, yeah, a dick, not yeah. like a dick but and look that no. see how the women go oh, i hate this guy well he's kind of a dick i think women need that a little bit because there's the, a better way of saying it's not the, dick no. okay. it's being being like witty and giving us a challenge yeah, like a little yes. and being That's mysterious say, a little not being tease. a dick because you know? if you're being a dick then you're you're feeding into her yeah, insecurities it's, it's and just, that's not helpful like, for you or for women it's exactly just poking fun at sometimes and yes. joking with that i like in a playful way and then, you know, giving her the sweet open side. It's like you do that. You push pull over, you know, say a two, three week period. The girl's going to be into you. At the yeah. End the whole the whole thing is that's a whole flirting ritual. It's yeah. Banter right there. That's what banter is. Yeah. And we've talked about this before. If you really want to learn how to successfully banter, go to an improvisation class because that's going to teach you how to do it properly. And even if you, you are reading these books, you're reading the game. It has tons of templates in there about what to say and what to do. So figure out how you can take. What, what, like whatever the, the construct is that you see Neil using, like start using your own words to do the same thing and just practicing it. And for right now, if it doesn't work, then that's okay. You're building up a skill. So it will eventually work because you're going to tweak it so that it makes sense for you. But the, yeah, the bottom line is like it has to be natural for you. Like if it doesn't feel natural for you to deliver it, it's going to be super awkward, yeah. you know? But it's okay to be yeah. awkward while you're learning a system. Yeah. But make it your own. But yeah. you, you have to. Yeah. Because the thing is, is like, if don't you. Don't bring notes. What did you say? Don't bring, like, oh, don't bring notes. Don't but bring honestly. Notes. <laughs> yeah, totally. To be honest, you could bring notes. Totally. Because for right now, that's like another part of your story. If you can own that story. We're yeah. like, oh, hold on one second. You like look over at your notes. Okay, and you're like, okay, okay now I'm going to get back out. to you. <laughs> let me interject here. My deal breaker. When that's I first, actually funny. When I first started dating my boyfriend. But you have to own it. We didn't speak on the phone for probably three months when we were just starting to get to know like that we were interested in each other. But you were seeing and each other in person, mm-hmm. right? No, this was before we ever saw oh, each other. Right. You oh, were wow. Doing the, just text right. or email? It was just Facebook messages. He was never on oh, Facebook. Oh, so you met in social media too. Yeah, well, I knew him I originally know. like as a teenager. But basically what happened was he would not call me. I gave him my number. <sighs> he wouldn't call, but it was because he was afraid. And he had a great response. And he said, I just am not finished writing the script for our phone, first phone conversation yet. <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious. Oh. And then, like, we actually 
had when we talked the first time, it was all about the script. Like, what would be in the script? What would we say here? Oh, that's cute. And it was a really good icebreaker. That's really cute. Yeah, and someone like me found it adorable. So if you find the right person, it could work. Oh, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Totally. All right, well, that is the end of my questions. Wow. That's all I got. It's all I got. So hopefully that gave you a good answer. What was his name? Brian from from London. From Ooh. London. From London. Hey, Brian. Yeah, and Chloe, thank you so much for being back on and being our single girl in the city. Do you want to tell people how to yeah, get in totally. contact with you and find out more about you and your lovely blog? Uh, yes, I'm at ChloeKlein.com and my Twitter handle is Cool. And your, your blog is awesome, by the way, girl. I was checking it out and cracking up. Great yeah, you're stories. Hilarious. <laughs> you're a great writer. Well, thank you. Wonderful. Well, we will definitely have you back on the show. We want you to be a regular and keep us informed on what's happening for all the single ladies out there. Yeah. Wonderful. Awesome. Sounds great. Awesome. Thank you. Bye, Clo. All right. So this was um, such a super fun episode because we I had know. ladies on. Because last week we had Steve Austin. Yeah. And so it's like so dude heavy. So finally, I know. now he's just all the camouflage chicks. and stuff. Like that was like really massive. But he's like a big teddy bear. He is a super oh. big teddy bear. So maybe it was a little bit feminine. Yeah, we need to get some more dudes on here. It's a little too estrogen No, this is heavy Ask for Women. Me. So we want to ask women. I know it's too much for you because now we're ganging up on you. I know. I'm actually kind of getting turned on by this. I'm like at half flow Mo, right stop. now. You're so gross this episode. <laughs> I might be going full flow in a little bit. Oh, Come no. on. God. Anyway, <laughs> you that should... wraps up today's episode. Yes, that <laughs> immediately wraps it up. <gasps> on that note, but maybe be sure to follow us on Twitter at Ask Woman Podcast and email us your questions at ask at askwomanpodcast.com. Yes, ask at askwomanpodcast.com. Keep it flowing, and yeah. we'd love to hear from you guys. And uh, yeah, new so episodes released on Thursday. Uh, what else we got? That's Nothing. It. That's, That's it. it. Love us and uh, love you. keep supporting us, and we appreciate it. And you guys are awesome. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, or maybe just in your pants. That's right, we're talking about erections. Let's be honest, guys. At the end of the day, it's all about getting it up, right? That's why millions of men rely on Enzyte brands for a confident performance anytime and every time. It's what we want, it's what you want. So let's just be honest about it. Take one capsule a day, just like a vitamin. It's all you need for a strong performance every single time. Bonus, if you call now, you can score a special Enzyte trial pack for the sack. Yeah, I said it and receive